So I've got my query ready to run against Snowflake using Python and the Snowflake connector, but I want to find out what I'm going to get back from my query before I actually run the query so I know exactly what I'm going to do with the results. I'm your host, Sean McKenzie, and today we're going to go back to our Python on Snowflake playlist and we're going to talk about uh, the describe method uh, of the uh, cursor that comes with the Snowflake connector and how it can help you to plan uh, by getting some results back before you run your query against the server. Without further ado, let's get to it. Want to see some more cool behind the scenes action and additional videos on this topic area? Make sure to check out my Patreon, the link is in the description. Okay, so uh, this method that I'm going to use, um, actually I needed to do an upgrade in order to use it. And I installed the Snowflake connector not too long ago. You actually need to have uh, 2.4.6, uh, the version of the Snowflake connector. Um, so make sure you install that. And also uh, you should install the, uh, make sure you, you install the connector with the square brackets and then pandas at the end of it. Um, so that you can use the pandas functionality if you like using pandas um, and that will go a long way. Um, so describe is, is quite useful. Um, it, it definitely is something that uh, if, especially if you're doing uh, sort of uh, custom queries on the fly where the fields change and all that kind of stuff, then you can, you can, you can prepare for the output um, at you know, before you actually send the, the query to the server to, to uh, execute. So I'm going to import my Snowflake connector as SC and then I'll, I'll uh, give some feedback to the user just to say, you know, we're connecting and then we're going to make that connection. That's that SC.connect and, uh, and we put all of our parameters in there. And then I'll, I'll set my uh, CS or my cursor equal to CNN.cursor and then I'll create uh, an SQL string that for one of the tables that I know is in the database. Um, you could, you know, imagine that you might be getting a view name or something uh, that you don't even have access to. You can't really go on to Snowflake to use the, you know, the worksheets and stuff. And you might have to do this on the fly too. So you might not know what's going to happen. So that's where this describe comes in. And it allows you to, to throw that SQL statement uh, into into uh, um, into the the argument there, and then you can you can get back a variable that will have information about each of the fields uh, that's in the output. So if it's a view with like you know you know 55 fields, this could be very handy, uh, especially if you're processing things on the fly. Um, I'm going to do a simple example here. I'm just going to print off each of the items inside of um, what I'm getting back from describe there the, the uh, metadata and then I'll put a period in between each one just so that it's uh, broken up a little bit there. Okay and I am doing a try accept block here. Um, I'll catch the exception and I'll print it and I'll just print off the uh, the exception if it comes up. I, I tend to break things pretty often on the first try. So um, uh, I'll put in our finally part of the block here and, uh, and that's going to execute regardless of whether or not there's an exception because we want to make sure that that uh, connection gets closed at the end. Um, and uh, we'll give some feedback to the user saying we're just connecting and then we're done. And that should really do it for a very simple um, describe. Um, so this is executed and you would do this before you actually use the cs.execute. Um, you know, we've got our SQL string there. And, uh, and we can just, you know, go ahead and run that and just see what we get back as output. And so as you can see, this is great. So we have not executed the, the query on the server yet, but it's giving us back the, uh, the result metadata. And it says there's a field called ID, a field called project name, a field called project description, and it has type codes in there. Um, and, uh, and you can tell all kinds of things like precision and and whether or not it is nullable, um, and uh, and that that's very very handy. Um, so you know, in this case, you know, if we had a project description, type code two, uh, those are te uh, text type codes, 
And so that can help you find, you know, what you're looking for, uh, especially if you're doing something on the fly. Somebody gave you a table name and you're doing a select star and or, and, or you're, you're executing uh, sort of different SQL statements every time and you're moving data somewhere else, then you can go ahead and you can use the result metadata to either create tables in advance or, or to you know, to do data processing, like if I change this to product name, the or pardon me, the product table, I can see, you know, I've got a product name, color, and list price that's in that table. And, uh, you know, that's definitely uh, something that's very, very handy. And you can also, you know, if you are about to run something with parameters, you know, with the execute statement, I did a video on that, so make sure you check out my video that has parameters. Uh, you can also, you know, use put your parameters into the describe statement, and it will also return the uh, the results as we're, you know, as we're looking for in in this example. So, you know, I could run it for another one. There's a project comments table. It only has a couple of tables. Uh, one of them is a, is uh, I created as an Envarcar Max, I think it was. So it's got like a massive size. Uh, one of the other tables you can see. Uh, there's only a 255 way up at the top there, the project description. Um, but uh, uh, you sort of you get an idea that you could break that <clears throat> break that apart and uh, and use all of the data that the metadata that's there to do further processing. And uh, I could do another example project staff. So this is like a you know uh, staff that have been assigned to projects. So this is a junction table, and uh, it brings together. Um, you know, staff and projects. And so you kind of get an idea um, what you can do with that. And so I could go and actually, you know, execute the SQL as well. Um, after I've done this, um, you know, uh, so I could do a CS, <clears throat> actually I'll do a, an RS equals CS.execute uh, SQL. And then I could do, you know, for, you know, R in RS, and then just print each line that is in there in the uh, result set and that'll put it into the that'll put it into the output as well um, and I'll show how to do this with pandas as well because I mentioned that earlier um, so this is gonna get the result data first and then it's gonna give you know it's got five columns there one uh, one two three four five and then you can see there's five columns here there's one uh, two three and then this big date time is uh, four, and then five, which has nothing in it. And uh, and so uh, you could work with that, or if you're looking to you know work with pandas, um, some of you guys like pandas. I I actually don't mind pandas for this kind of stuff. Um, so you could actually go and you know throw your import statement for pandas on there, um, and then you could use. Now this is where I said you, you install the Snowflake connector with the square brackets pandas at the end uh, because that allows you to have access to these other methods uh, where we can actually say, um, <clears throat> I'll get rid of that stuff there and I'll just say, you know, data frame is equal to cs.fetch pandas all and uh, that's going to bring all that the results back into a pandas data frame which is really really useful I did a video on the pandas stuff as well make sure you check out my earlier snowflake videos and uh, and I can print off the head of that uh, and as you can see that's a little bit neater than using the sort of uh, direct cursor output um, you actually get a nice data frame and uh, you can use that for various purposes and that is how you use describe with a snowflake cursor in Python. Want to see some more cool behind the scenes action and additional videos on this topic area? Make sure to check out my Patreon. The link is in the description. Hope you enjoyed today's discussion on how to use describe with the uh, Python connector. If you like what you saw today, please give the video a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, click the bell when you see the bell. And if you have any questions or comments, please put those in the comment section below. Have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.